Holy smokes, folks, the trades have turned on Disney. That's right, the official mouthpieces of Hollywood have all decided that Disney is done and they are attacking Disney with the exact same talking points and truths that we've been telling on this channel now for months and months. What has happened? Perhaps we have become the mainstream. Telling truth, it turns out, actually gives you predictive powers. And now the trades are joining in. They are piling on Disney and dismantling the Iger legacy before our very eyes. But that's not all. As this is happening, as the Iger lies are being removed from the scales of Hollywood, Netflix is deciding to follow perhaps in the same path that took down Disney. We'll explain it all right now. Hello folks, welcome back to the WDW Pro channel. A joy as always that you have joined us. We are here to explain entertainment, keep you ahead of the culture curve. And I think in this case, we can definitely say that we have kept you ahead of the culture curve because now finally Variety, one of the official trades of Hollywood, is joining in, repeating essentially what we have been saying here for weeks and months. Now, why does that matter? Well, it matters because the trades are the official voices of Hollywood. They tell the people over there what it is they can say and what they can't say. They set the official doctrine for the actors and the guilds and all of that. It is where you go and you say the things which will be acceptable amongst the Hollywood class. So, today we're going to do something very rare. We're going to talk about this article, but we're going to read the entire thing. We don't usually do that here. But it's that important, that necessary. Don't miss it for a moment. And then we're going to show you that Netflix is actually making a massive potential error and following Disney in spite of everything. And that indicates to us that the acolytes of Hollywood cannot get out of the way of their own doctrines, which tell them to make decisions which are not financially wise. Here's the story from Todd Spangler, Disney's 10 Biggest Moments of 2023. Layoffs, box office bombs, board fight, DeSantis feud, and more. And remember, this sets the course for the discussion in 2024. Now, why do I think that Todd Spangler is willing to come out here and lambast Disney? I think that the trades now realize, and that means that the Hollywood intelligentsia now knows that 2024 is unlikely to be very good for Disney. And they need to not be on the wrong side of this, and so they're trying to get on the right side of it. Disney celebrated its 100th anniversary in 2023, but the Mouse House had a rough and tumble year. CEO Bob Iger, after stepping back into the C-suite for a tenure that will last at least through the end of 2026, folks, we're here to tell you, if you're just, if you're just analyzing the C-suite, he will stay as a consultant, probably keep his office into the 2030s, that according to his contract, swung the axe in a round of mass layoffs, among other cost-cutting and strategic moves, as he looked to right the good ship Mickey. I don't know exactly how it's possible he's riding the good ship Mickey when Bob Chapek, his successor and somehow predecessor, was the guy who oversaw the highest stock value the company has ever seen. So I don't know why it needed to be righted. Iger said he's been fixing a lot of problems that the company has had and dealing with a lot of challenges, some of which he blamed on decisions that were made by my predecessor, ousted ex-CEO Bob Chapek, who again, Bob Iger picked. Also in 2023, Disney movies suffered a dismal year at the box office. And again, folks, we will remind you right here that Bob Iger greenlit every single one of those movies. In fact, the very first film that Bob Chapek will have greenlit, and there will only be a few months of movies in which Bob Chapek greenlit those films, because Bob Chapek was only at the helm of the company for 11 months, and only a few of those months were without the shadow campaign to remove him. So every single one of the movies that came out at the box office this year were greenlit by Bob Iger, with the company slate failing to deliver any billion-dollar-plus blockbusters. Meanwhile, Iger raised the question about whether Disney's stable of linear TV networks are core to the business, given ongoing declines in ratings and the surge of streaming. Sports powerhouse ESPN is on track to launch a full direct-to-consumer offering in 2025, while the company has been exploring options to bring in strategic equity partners for ESPN. Iger also rolled out a massive plan to invest in Disney's theme park and cruise lines, and folks, I'm here to tell you, that's a great effort. And perhaps this is the one thing that, the one bit of Disney spin that has stuck here with Variety, but this is not true either. What, why is it not true? Because if you look at the $60 billion total 
and you consider inflation, and then you consider that it's now being spread amongst a very uh, uh, much larger pot. 60 billion is not the domestic park. 60 billion is cruise lines, experiences, the China parks. And it seems like the majority of the money is going to the China parks, which Disney could lose at any moment. So again, more stupid decisions. And Disney and Iger also were embroiled in fights with the company's detractors, including striking writers and actors. Ron DeSantis, Elon Musk, and activist investor Nelson Peltz, who rekindled his bid to shake up the Disney board, a.k.a. Proxy War 2.0. Now, folks, as we read this, is this is this fascinating to you in the way that I think it is? This reads like a WDW Pro channel video. They're, it's like they're watching the, the channel and just reading our greatest hits. The trades now agree with us. The trades now have seen the light. Welcome aboard, Variety. Happy to have you reporting what we're reporting in the way that we report it. Amazing. We'll get you, we'll get you on board soon with that Disney Parks trickery. Disney lays off more than 8,000 employees. Iger's cost-cutting plan at Disney included the elimination of more than 8,000 jobs this year, with cutbacks concentrated in its media divisions. For the fiscal 2023 year ending, September 30th, Disney recorded severance-related charges of $357 million. At the company's town hall in November, Iger told employees, I knew that there were myriad changes that I would face coming back, all of his doing. I won't say that it was easy, but I've never second-guessed the decision to come back, and being back still feels great. And note this, folks, this town hall that is referenced here, it's a, it's a town hall in name only. They didn't allow a single question to be asked. You couldn't ask a question. It was just a PR speech, and employees were allowed to watch it. A brutal year at the box office. For the first time since 2014, Disney had a year without a billion-dollar movie at the global box office. The disappointments included The Marvels, the lowest grossing release ever in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Let me say, probably now, probably going to be the biggest financial flop of all time. Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny, uh, up there as well. We'll see how that plays out. We'll get these tax filings next year and tell you which one won that award you never want to win. Garnering just $84 million domestically to date, and it will not cross the $100 million, and $204.6 million worldwide. Epitomizing Disney's cinema woes, James Cameron's Avatar The Way of Water, released by its 20th Century Studios subsidiary at the end of 2022, grossed $283 million domestically in 2023. And let it be said that James Cameron was separate from Disney. James Cameron can do whatever the heck he wants to do, and Disney's just the beneficiary. And so all of that money, while it's good and it's great, not all of it's going to Disney, a lot of it's going to James Cameron, just as has been reported by the Valiant Renegade channel. That was more than most of Disney's would-be blockbusters, including Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania at only $214 million, Indiana Jones 5 at only $174 million, Elemental at only $154 million, and Haunted Mansion at only $67 million, and Wish with $54 million. By the way, if you make this, uh, if you make this out into not just domestic, but also worldwide, it gets even worse. And don't forget as well, then when it when it's talking here about uh, Avatar The Way of Water in 2023, it, it knows this and it's not trying to hide this. If you include the actual year in which Avatar The Way of Water released, oh my gosh, it blows every one of these movies out of the water. A bright spot, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 pulled in $845 million worldwide. A strong showing, even if it didn't break a billion. It did break even though probably, and I'll say this, the problem here is that that is Disney's biggest competition now. James Gunn made that. Where is James Gunn? Is he with Disney? Is he a rising star now going to springboard into even more Marvel stuff? No, he's gone. He went to DC. And after Aquaman 2, which we'll review soon, I have a feeling that they're really ready for some James Gunn over at DC. And this summer's The Little Mermaid scored $569 million globally. However, previous Disney live action adaptations like The Lion King or Beauty and the Beast, easily topped the billion-dollar threshold. And that's why The Little Mermaid was made with a budget that necessitated $800 million to break even. Because those other films had all broken a billion, so they thought, well, we'll, make, we'll, we'll clear that with $200 million easy. Instead, it lost hundreds of millions of dollars. Amid the WGA strike and on the eve of SAG after walkout, Bob Iger gave workers on the picket lines, a new reason to fight by saying the unions were not being realistic in their demands, which he called very disturbing. And uh, that, so they, they consider that another ding on Disney. Another board fight. After stepping back from his fight with Disney and Iger earlier this year, activist investor Nelson Peltz clambered back, and it's gotten personal. 
Pelsa's Try and Fund Management announced it was launching a proxy battle, bo- um, <laughs> a proxy ballot battle. I like that one to get two seats on the board at Disney's shareholder meeting next spring, saying it would nominate Pelts himself and former Disney CFO Jay Rusulo as independent director candidates. And folks, when they when they nominated Jay Rusulo, that was a huge swing at Disney because Jay Rusulo, being the former CFO, let's recall, folks. Go back to your knowledge of uh, economics 101. Who at the corporations knows all the skeletons? The CFO. The CFO knows where all the money is hidden. Jay Rasulo knows all the money behind Disney. And he's the guy that they're putting up there. He's the guy they think can turn this around. Disney is one of the most iconic companies in the world with unrivaled scale, unparalleled customer loyalty, irreplaceable intellectual property, and an enviable commercial flywheel. However, Disney has woefully underperformed its peers and its potential, Tryon said in a statement. And that's not all. Tryon also claimed that for the entire tenure of Bob Iger, he has underperformed. The Walt Disney Company has underperformed the rest of the market. What an attack on his legacy. Moving to own 100% of Hulu. Again, folks, they are hitting our greatest hits in this article. We talk about these things all the time, and we get we get such angst and anger from the pixie dusters out there claiming that we are just negative, negative, negative. And now we are the official, we're the official truth of the trades. Who can believe it? What a year. We have become mainstream. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. I don't think, I don't think we belong in mainstream because we tell the truth too much. Moving to own 100% of Hulu. Disney is in the middle of closing a deal with Comcast to acquire full ownership of Hulu. The company this month paid $8.61 billion to Comcast, which holds a 33% stake in Hulu, but the final price tag could be much higher. And that is the key. Disney wanted you to believe that that $8.6 billion was the, the amount they would pay. That will be based on an assessment of Hulu's market value as of September 30th by each side's bankers. And what do we think the actual number is going to be? Probably going to be somewhere between 12 and $21 billion. Somewhere in between. So, you want to you want to come to the middle of that and say 16 17 billion dollars that's a lot that's double so we'll see where that lands dozens of shows pulled off disney plus and hulu for the fiscal year ended september 30th disney took a total of 2.58 billion dollars in content impairment charges including for dozens of titles it removed from streaming services to reduce costs this spring the media company pulled more than 50 titles from disney plus and hulu including series Willow, The Mysterious Benedict Society, and Dollface, and movies such as the Oscar-nominated The One and Only Ivan. That came after Iger told investors the company would raise the price on the ad-free Disney Plus tier this year to better reflect the value of our content offerings. Now, why does this matter? Well, it matters because, and and by the way, the reason Variety is mentioning that there's one of these that is an Oscar-nominated, it's because Disney found that some of these items were better for them as a tax write-down than his actual content sitting on their streaming service. They'd already paid for them. There's essentially no cost to have them sitting there in their roster, in their catalog, and yet they they needed money. Disney needed money, and so they took tax write-downs, eliminated movies like, movies like Willow or TV shows like Willow in order to try to get money for Hulu. The Disney-DeSantis feud grinds on. The beef between Disney and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who as of this writing is still trying to win the GOP's 2024 presidential nomination, continued to wind its way through the courts through the year. Disney angered DeSantis in 2022 when it opposed the state's parental rights and education bill, known to critics as, you get it, which regulates classroom instruction on orientation and identity and gives parents the right to sue school districts over alleged violations. And specifically, it refers to uh, the lower elementary grades, right? So uh, preschool, pre-K, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, you get the idea. Also note that here in this trade article, they actually give the official name of the of the uh, legislation or the law now. They also say what it's called by, by the critics. Folks, this is accurate reporting. Every time we read an article like this, I have to come in and say, by the way, this news is, is propagandized. I, I can't say that. This is actually accurately articulated. Holy smokes, what is going on? Wow. ESPN gets separated and linear networks stay in limbo. I mean, this just keeps going. This is this is amazing. It's amazing because there's no spin anymore. They're they're just this this article is just telling the truth. And that that is impressive because they only tell the truth. Now I'm not saying this about Todd Spangler, but the trades, they're not in the business of telling the truth necessarily. 
They're in the business of putting out the official narrative, the official dogma, the official doctrine. And when the truth is out here, like it is, such that it is, what it means is, I believe, that they know that the market is going to go in the direction of the truth and that they can't control that. And so they want to get ahead of it. So they're accurate. What's the future of ESPN and Disney's other legacy TV network businesses? Iger earlier this year separated ESPN, headed by chairman Jimmy Pitaro, breaking out as a separate unit from Disney's linear TV networks group. That wasn't to signal that ESPN is for sale, according to Iger, but he later said in a July CNBC interview that the company was looking for a strategic, strategic partner to invest in ESPN and distribute its content. But again, folks, and it goes on to talk about those core businesses, that's not a sign necessarily of strength because it indicates that Disney needs a strategic partner because they, they don't have the full spectrum of assets to deliver this in the way that they would need to. Why else would you want to have a strategic partner? A massive pay discrimination lawsuit goes on to talk about the 9,000 women, at least, who are now part of a class action lawsuit against Disney for disparity in pay wages. Elon Musk rages at Bob Iger after Disney pulls ads from X. Uh, now, of course, uh, we know that on the uh, the Tesla screens, Disney Plus has largely disappeared. And uh, we, we got the meme out of this, of course, go fund yourself. We've got um, Elon Musk calling for Bob Iger to be fired, terminated, resign, all of that. Now, this, is, this runs through the, the, the full gamut of what has happened to Disney, I think, except for there's not enough concentration on Reedy Creek Improvement District because that re that's the biggest story for Disney in the year 2023. And Variety doesn't get that. But I, I can't really hold that against them because Todd Spangler is not a theme parks person. Theme parks are typically way outside of what the trades cover. Way, way out there. And it, it, it's kind of superfluous to anything they do. And yet, that's the biggest vulnerability Disney has. We're talking about a trillion dollars over the decades. We're talking about potential criminal charges there and all, all sorts of, of bad stuff. And, and there, that audit found with prima facie evidence and exhibits things that no company wants to ever be accused of doing. So that, that could be very bad. That should have been on the list. I understand why it's not. But the big takeaway here, folks, is that Variety, one of the trade publications, is saying that that list, that those are the 10 biggest moments of 2023. Not a single positive story for Disney in the trade. Now, that not only indicates that the trades view probably that Disney is going to have a worse 2024 and they need to be ahead of that. And that's, by the way, that's for self-preservation purposes, I would say. But also what it indicates is that Bob Iger has utterly lost his sway in the, in the wake of all of this. In the halls of Hollywood, Bob Iger no longer has the cachet he needs to be able to influence people to not write articles such as this. Because you might as well slap the WDW Pro label on this article. This is, this is our playlist for the year. This is what we've been saying. And now all of those who have been declaring that we were slanted, biased, negative, uh, out to get Disney. Now they are on the outside looking in as we're aligned now with the trades. Shockingly, I know. One thing that is also shocking, though, is that despite what we have seen from the Walt Disney Company and how its downfall began, other companies are not so wise, and I'm not here to give you a, a lesson on morality. I'm not here to tell you what your morality should be, but I am here to say that based on what we have watched with the Walt Disney Company and other companies in other industries, this decision by uh, Coco Melon is bizarre to me. I have no idea why you would ever have two men singing to a toddler uh, about doing a performance for them because they're the toddler's two biggest fans. And this is, this is truly bizarre. If it's a, you know, here's the deal, folks. There can be a disagreement that we have in regards to morality. And I'm, I'm not telling you what my ethics are here. But the disagreement when it comes to financials. Remember what we talked about when the Walt Disney Company first entered into uh, attacking the state of Florida, the legislatures there, and the legislation regarding when bedroom issues would be taught to children in official state curriculum. Remember when we said this is a massive, horrific, terrible financial mistake? And we said, you, this is the dumbest thing you could possibly do. And I remember how the heavy dosage pixie dusters all said, no, no, no. 
The state of Florida is too big. Disney's so smart. Well, guess what? We were right. We were right. It was a horrific financial decision. Now, if you've just watched that happen to Disney and your Netflix, why would you begin to go down that same road knowing where that leads when you don't have to go down that road or when you could approach this with perhaps a slightly more savvy approach to it? I also find it interesting. If we go back in this uh, this little trailer or whatever this is, why why is there a camera lighting rig over there? What what in the world is this? I'm not going to say what I think it is, but I I think it's depraved. Um, not not from a moral position. Okay, I, I'm going to hold my thoughts on that. I think it's depraved from a propagandistic position because. This is assuming that parents won't be watching and that you can get away with it in spite of what Disney has done. And it's also assuming that the blowback that other companies have faced will not happen to you. And it is frivolously flaunting this with the thought that, well, even if we take blowback from this, even if it gravely damages our company or this brand, shareholders be damned, we don't care. And that, I think, is stupid. And I think that's how you arrive in Disneyland. Not the theme park, but a land where this sort of an article can happen. I don't know what will happen with Netflix. I, I bring up the, the Matt Walsh thing because he's an influential individual on the conservative side, and he is now bringing that to the attention of people. So will that be on Fox News next? Will it be on uh, Daily Wire and Daily Caller and Hot Air and all of those websites? Will, will it be there next? I don't know. I don't know. But I can tell you that it's a financial risk that Netflix apparently believes it must take. Otherwise, why would you do it? Again, no comment on the morality side of this. Financially, though, uh, it's it's quite the risk. So we'll see how that plays out, and we will cover it. We here on the channel, our official position on all of these things is simply that you need to be forthright with parents. They don't need to be fooled about what you're putting on the television sets and shows of their children. That's it. Tell them Tell them what it is that you are teaching them. And if what you are teaching them through song and dance is that there are no uh, boundaries in imagination and you should wear and do whatever you want to do so long as it makes a toddler feel good, then two dads will stand there and cheer for you. Okay, if that's the value set, just explain it so that parents know so they're not taken off guard. For some parents, they'll want their child to watch that. So be it. For other parents, they're going to say, heck no. And it seems like, based on the market reaction of the Walt Disney Company over the past, let's say, 12 months, although it goes farther than that, perhaps the majority of parents are going to say, heck no, and perhaps Coco Melton as a, uh, as a brand will now face uh, some backlash. We'll see how that goes. Folks, that's the video for today. We now are one with the trades. Variety has seen the light. They have been baptized into the WDW Pro way of seeing Hollywood. And if you missed out on that audit recently where we had the 90% accuracy rating for our scoops and leaks and rumors, well, maybe it's about time they began to heed the call of Pro. All right, folks, heed this call. If you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe. And when you click it, you stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. Drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. And folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, keep having fun. And I guess, welcome to the mainstream. Wilton, you know you're not allowed in the kitchen. And, uh, it, it smells like burning dog hair. What are you doing in here? Well, I got a DM from Slade Wilson on how to roast Jonas. I mean, I didn't bother reading it, but because I already have the perfect plan. Wait a minute. So you're, you're challenging Slade? Well, not really. It's more like what Caffeine Kennedy and Kevin Feige do to Disney. A tag team of destruction. Plus, we're also making sure that everyone knows to subscribe to WDW Pro this Christmas. Well, I, I appreciate you helping Pro, but uh, doing one good thing does not make up for both of you doing a bad thing. Pro's making sure everyone gets accurate information and stays ahead of the culture curve, but, uh, oh man, what is that smell? You're not really... 
Oh, yeah. No, I'm literally roasting Jonas in the Help oven. Me. I mean, it was kind of confusing we were going with that line of questioning in the roasting first place. Roasting someone's a figure of speech. You don't actually cook them. Somebody. Oh, my. Help. Hang on, Jonas. I hope you're happy about what you've done this Christmas, Wilton. You almost ended Jonas. <laughs> On the brighter side, he looks great with that new tan. I guess you could say I gifted him a nice complexion. 